Hello. Hello. Welcome again to the Hobo and His Girlfriend Wrestling Podcast. Let me back up a little bit. No. Echo. Uh, my name is Hobo Tom. I'm wearing kind of an old gym shirt. Bullet Club shirt. Always a good shirt to wear. A very comfy shirt. Um, I'm here to talk about some Lucha Underground, but some programming notes. Um, so hopefully I'll be able to get this up today. And then later today, or tonight, or tomorrow morning, probably, well, actually in a few hours I have to get ready because I have to go to the gym. Then I'm off to Sanford. The hobo is expanding his territory. I'm off to Sanford for some NXT action. Hopefully it's a little bit better than last time. So I still have some stuff to do, so this is going to be a pretty quick show, although I have a lot of notes. Which is weird. It was, it was really an action-packed episode. Of Lucha Underground, and I should always put the number on. Because I forget that quite frequently. Again, please like, share, comment, subscribe. Um, I'm on my way to 100 hours. I think I have 32, I think, more to go. Something like that. But in 32 hours, I'll have another video. Again, if you've seen my past video, is the WWE 2K17. My 2,000 view celebration, so I was kind of happy about that. Um, I think my next celebration, I'll make a big old Philly style cheesesteak. Again, you can also tell me what's a cook. What would you like to see prepared in the hobo kitchen? Again, you can do that by emailing or commenting. Again, email at hobo and girlfriend at gmail.com. But let's get to Lucha Underground. Clock sticking on me. Um, again, Lucha Underground is great. They have a really quick, probably about three to four minute recap. It just really hits all the main points. Again, Phoenix turning black. It's really just a pre preview of the matches. Again, kind of the build up to all the matches for this episode. And I mean, that, that's good. It gets, it gets me excited to watch. And then, of course, you have the El Generico band. You've seen them a couple of times, so there's no need to see them anymore. I do have to make a gift of them. Shoot. Sometime. To figure out stuff. Do you have enough memory on this memory card? Yeah. If not, poo poo. So, Matt, you have Matt Stryker <laughs> in the mocking moment of the night. In the hobo event of the night mocks WWE self promotion. Uh, I forget exactly how it goes, but he says um, it would be this point in the pay-per-view where we tell you to subscribe to the network. He says, eh, eh, we do that for free. We show you episodes for free. Well, unless you don't have Spectrum. But even then, you can find spots on where you can still watch the whole episode. And you have to do things the hobo way. So it starts off um, Phoenix versus Aerostar. Phoenix comes out in all black. Melissa's not excited. He's like, in, in Phoenix. And he's dressed in all black. Dark Phoenix. Cool Phoenix. Um, there's great character work by Phoenix throughout the match. I mean, Phoenix is still quick. Aerostar is just amazing. I mean, the fans are really split on, on who to cheer for. Rivals, all because of Phoenix's changing attitude. Now, Vampiro, yeah. both of these luchadors, known for their high flying, known for their in-ring ability, where does the advantage lie? I don't even know. I probably would have to go with Phoenix because I think that Aerostar is confused. Maybe he's looking for retribution, but Phoenix is playing the game, and I think Aerostar wanted to give him the benefit of the doubt in this one. On a second, quick roll up and a two count. I mean, all the fair of love and war, right? <laughs> Aerostar may be just, just a tick quicker than Phoenix. It's, it's hard to say because Phoenix is, you saw at the beginning right there before the lockup and all that, he was snapping in his posture. He was kind of copying everything Aerostar was doing. So I think maybe he might be quicker, but Phoenix. Wow. Phoenix 
mean, Aerostar is just amazing. His Lucha Libre flying abilities are insane. I mean, Matt Striker does go off on tangents talking about shape-shifting aliens. Um, and Phoenix, this amazing character work. He does like a three-jump swanton bomb. I don't even think that was the finisher. I mean, Aerostar was hitting Canadian Destroyer and an outside-in springboard DDT. And I apologize if that's not the right thing, but what do I know? I mean, he goes from the outside to the second rope to over the top to a DDT. Hey, an outside-in springboard DDT. Sounds good to me. I do have to polish this up because, again, coming soon. Let's see, where is it? Where's my card? Where's my promo card? Cheap promo time. Again, if you talk to the, the hobo, if you talk to hobo Tom, and talk to him about wrestling, you're going to get a free pop. And Southern Pro Lucha Libre coming to Daytona Beach. Um, there's also Believe Wrestling. I think this one, where is she? Amber Nova I is in NXT now. Hopefully I see her tonight. Um, I think, uh, just a very quick news, and then we'll get back to my notes. They, NXT released the one guy that they had to do autographs in Daytona Beach. A couple of weeks ago. That must suck for that guy. Yeah, you're called and you have to go to Daytona Beach, sign some autographs, and then they're like, Pfft. you're out of here. So, Aerostar, let's continue on with the Lucha Underground. So, Aerostar hits the Canadian Destroyer, again, the outside end springboard DDT. I mean, Fe he, there is a pin attempt. Phoenix just sits up. No kick out, just sits straight up, sits up. Again, he does that spinning muscle buster driver, whatever it's called, the, the dark driver. I don't know. It was awesome. I mean, this was really. I'm gonna bump it up. It's so good because I actually have so many notes too. This was a filet mignon match. You know, it's good mainly because of the character work and all the outside stuff. And the outside, the outside people coming in and just really adding and enhancing the entire story. I mean, Melissa is just so terrified. I mean, she tries to bring back good Phoenix. Good Phoenix isn't there. I mean, he just stalks Melissa until Dragon Azteca Jr. comes out. And then he gets a beating, too. Because, Melissa, because again, the reason for this is that Phoenix was just beating up Aerostar. It was a senseless after the match. Breakout beating. But then Phoenix gives Dragon and Sekka Jr. that spinning muscle buster driver. So, of course, that brings on Antonio Cuerno. Yeah, I think that's his name. And he says, Azteca Jr., You're, you can't compete. Of course, Aztec Jr., Dragon Azteca Jr., being the com competitor he is, he says, like, no, 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 I'll fight, I'll fight. You're a true fighting champion. Just like my cat as you see her meander in the background. Hey, Chispa. How are you? Fuzz Muffin. Bunch of stuff happened around the house. She's all discombobulated. You want to say hi to everyone? No, you just want to sniff and rub against stuff. You're good. So this led to the match between Dragon Azteca Jr. and Marty the Marth Mar Martinez. I mean, Azteca Jr., great seller. He sells throughout the match. Again, his previous injury, that makes sense. I mean, just like everything hurts him. Marty, again, he, he's a good brawler. Um, Vampiro <laughs> just rattles off. Like, dictionary definitions of, like, psychosis. I mean, it's like he's reading it from a dictionary. It's really good. I mean, Marty is just a true Rudo. And Dragon is like a junior. Still has amazing Lucha skills. But let me tell you something that does, if you don't mind. What's up? Crazy is I mean, crazy does work at the big leagues. Yes. Yeah, well, okay. Being crazy is like an off-the-wall thing. Nice. You know, something out of character if you're having an off day. Psychotic, check this out, is the person with a personality disorder manifesting itself in extreme antisocial attitudes and behavior with the lack of conscience. I think that is my good friend, Marty the Moth. Great to 
description there. Psychotic. It's not like I've been told that before and I know it off my heart, but I'm just saying. It's imperious with how it's up. The fact that El Dragon Azteca successfully defended the gift of the gods title versus the Mariposa, Marty's sister. Is Marty's sister just trying to break his neck? It's just something's going on, and you know, you can only push or bend a piece of wood until it's eventually going to snap, right? I, I guess that's, that's where we're at with this guy. Hero bends wood. Marty's a pass. Martinez goes in for the cover, and gets it too. Definitely noticing a more focused and concentrated Marty. Yes. With just a look on his face like he's almost here. How but, dare he be present? You know what I'm saying? No, I, I get what you're saying. Normally Marty's distant, but Dragon has been exponentially slowed down here, and I think that has to work into Marty's favor. I, I, oh my God, he just Marty hit landing. bad. This is but throughout the whole process, you could tell Dragon as Tekka Jr. was not 100%, which is good, and Marty was like being very sadistic and enjoying the pain. In fact, you could see. Moments where he was actually laughing. It's like, yes, yes, <laughs> hurt me some more. So it was really good, though. And then Marty has like a butterfly brain buster, which is amazing. Of course, Marty the Moth wins. Again, after he got beat up and everything. Well, Dragon and Second got beat up. And after everything, hey, take advantage of it, Marty the Moth. That's a true Roto thing to do. Thumbs up to you for your character work. Then, of course, being the true Rudo, he makes the ref put the, that huge, amazing belt on him. I mean, that belt's even bigger than their main event belt. I mean, it's, it's like a secondary undercard belt, but so much better looking. And, of course, he makes the referee raise his hand in victory. Then he shoves the referee and celebrates. So, so that's... Again, this was actually a really fun match. This was a surf and turf quality match. So again, after this, they had a really creepy vignette in mid-show. I don't know who the writers are. But someone is stealing stuff from YouTube. Because I heard the word friendo being mentioned. You may enter. I've been waiting up there for a month. Rendo!
And that leads me to believe who's writing this stuff? Steve here and Larson? What are they doing? Have they been promoted to low level Lucha Underground writers? Makes sense. I guess they're both in California. They both at one time worked for Machinima. Forget where Larson said he worked before that. Steve here, I think, worked at worked for the Sacramento Kings as the announce guy. And they both went to like college or like community college or filmmaking or something like that. You have to look up their bios. Again, two good guys kind of inspired a whole bunch of people to do wrestling wrestling shows like this. Thank you. Again, go to the Friendo page and check things out. And I'll give them their, their free pop. Go to Going In Raw. That's entertaining. And, and a heck of a lot better produced than this show. Then that led to the three-way match, the triple threat match between King Cuerno, Mil Moretes, and Pentagon Dark. And this was a really fun match, too. I mean, there's a real focus on Mil to begin with. Uh, Cuerno and Pentagon Dark, both double-teamed. Uh, Mil, again, you want to get rid of the big guy first. Makes sense. Wrestling that makes sense? Yes, 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 yes. Again, it was, it was really good. It was really fun. I mean, after a little bit of double team on Mill, Mill just starts speeding up both of them. I mean, double clotheslines, run to one corner, punch the guy, then run to the other, punch the guy, throw him into the other. It was really fun. I mean, for a while, it seemed to be it was going to be a two on one competition. And then they threw Mill out of the ring. Again, smart wrestling. Get rid of the big guy. You don't want to fight two guys. You just want to go one on mono and mono, one on one. So again, it was almost two on one until they threw Mill out and then. Oh, I, I Matt Stryker and his imagery is the best. Um, Pentagon's again, once Pentagon has control of the match, it's a much faster pace, um, very more Lucha Libre style. King Corno is fast still, 
but he's a little bit stronger style, I think. More more heavy into striking. Pentagon Jr. is just amazing. And again, striker <laughs> and his imagery is just great. I mean, Vampiro told him to change his imagery. I mean, said something that's like, oh, he just stomped on the heart of Mel Martis, and, and Vampiro said something to the effect of, well, that shouldn't do anything. This man doesn't have a heart. It's like, okay, he he... He, he double stomped his chest cavity. Just great, though. The way those two interact, they're probably the best tandem announced team I've heard in a long time. And that covers a lot, although I don't watch a lot of Ring of Honor. Are you sure how that commentary team is? Might Start to add them plus some impact wrestling. I'm not too sure yet. I have to discuss things with my girlfriend. Again, she's a 50 50 partner, or she, or it's a 60 40 partnership. Me, of course, being 40%, her being 60%. That's a little bit more wrestling for her to watch. I mean, I could watch it for a while. No more TV, so I have something to watch at least. But that's something I'm going to kick around a little bit later. Every so often I, I do the big shows, the big kind of pay-per-view shows. And I did Slammiversary. That was really fun. I got a really good reaction. Thank you very much. Um, so a little bit more again. It was just really good. I mean, Pentagon eventually started to work over the back of Mill, giving him two lung blowers or backstabbers, whatever they call it nowadays. I think, I think it's a backstabber. I think the lung blower is when you're in the suplex position. But he eliminated Mill. And then he went after King Cuerno. Makes sense. Again, he, he pinned King Cuerno in the middle of the ring. He wins. Again, good quality surf and turf match. And then the shock. Marty the Moth runs in, just starts to beat him. Antonio Cuerno says, My son, you, my son used to do it where you had to give one week's notice. Marty the Moth made a very compelling argument. Why well, should be any time. So, Marty, do you want to have this match now? <laughs> yeah. Release Ring the bell. So you have another match, an unprecedented fourth match in Lucha Underground. It wasn't as long, and you knew Pentagon Dark was already really beat up and exhausted. So it was Mario the Moth Martinez versus Pentagon Dark for the Lucha Underground champion. Of course, in this process, Mario the Moth surrendered the Gift of the Gods belt. So that means probably soon they're going to have another lead-up tournament. And then probably they'll have a couple matches for the medallions. And then probably have the Gift of the Gods championship. Kind of Aztec Warfare match. Probably for Ultima Lucha Cuatro. Which I don't know when that's going to be. That's, that'll probably be October. Probably end of October-ish. Beginning of November. I forget how it is. And you have an impromptu match. Marty just starts brawling. He's just going to beat beat the mask off of Pentagon Jr. Or Pentagon Dark. Here, man. No, but he just got a whooping from two other guys. 
while two other monsters, well, one monster and a hunter, and now an insane person. How's Marty going to pin Pentagon if Pentagon's tied to the middle rope? I think Marty just realized that. Well, I, I'm just cover here. Leg hooked. No. The champ keeps kicking out. The champ keeps showing fight. I, I'm just kind of uh, absorbing the violence, my friend, and this change to the rules and jumping it on us just like that. I, uh, the only good thing that I'm seeing right now is the fans are certainly responding. I feel like I'm in a football stadium, soccer, European-style hooligans, singing, chanting, in a good fist fight. That's awesome. You, you, you know what I'm talking about. Absolutely. Uh -huh. The arsenal yeah. in these two, like you've been in a fist fight, is something that legends are made of. This, are we, are we, this is something that we've never... We sing just about everything together here in the temple, Matt. This is something that we can finally say we didn't expect, and it's really peeled our wings back. Expected Pentagon to show some fight. That's exactly what the champ is doing. Finally, he creates some separation between himself and Marty Martinez. Oh. And then, of course, Pentagon Jr., being the fighting champion that he is, comes back a little bit. And then some, ma then some woman in black, some mysterious woman, just beats up. Pentagon Dark. Dude, the referee is on the floor with Marty. Oh, wow. The same move Pentagon used. This stranger. You, no, 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 no. And, and it's like Marty Martinez was playing possum on the floor to keep the attention of Marty Elias. And now, is the inevitable about to happen? Oh, my God. All package pile driver, and of course that was it. One, two, three. We have a new Lucha Underground champion. He is Marty the Moth Martinez. And this was a really fun match. This was a cheeseburger match. The only reason I give it a cheeseburger was impromptu. I think it only lasted like five minutes. So it was short, impromptu. It was still good though. The heck's that? I was doing donuts outside. Donut has a new toy. You may or may not be able to hear it. I, I don't know how, how good this mic is. Pretty good. Now that was Lucha Underground. And again, another really fun episode. I'd like to thank everyone for watching. I'm going to hopefully post this video up soon. Do some editing to it. As always, pop in some videos, show you my ratings, and I'll get this up and loaded because then I am off to Sanford for NXT. So hopefully I'll get that video made tonight. Probably tomorrow morning I'll post that. So again, look forward to that, everyone. everyone have a